Welcome to Patty's Aquatics. Now in this video what I'm going to be doing is starting the food web within my 75 gallon puffer tank. So stick around and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So a food web, if you're asking yourself what is that exactly, I'll explain it in a minute. But first, I highly recommend you watch some of my past videos to get into this one and understand where I'm going with it. Um, first, I would highly suggest you'd watch one of my two resurrection jar videos, uh, more specifically, probably my most recent one where I collected some in the winter. And those are the two jars I'll be using to add into this tank. And then secondly, you can check out my latest update on this tank where I showed I was having being overrun by algae and that I wanted to get a lot of plants at this uh, local swap meet I was at which I did, lots of new plants. And then my plan was to put those resurrection jars into here to start that food web. But now, like I said, what is a food web? To answer that question of what a food web exactly is, I'm going to say first off, this will be the first time I'm actually going to try it and continue with it. Um, so I'm gonna be learning this as you watch this. And secondly, I would highly recommend that you check out Father Fish's uh, YouTube channel or his Discord channel. There is so much information in there. I know I've mentioned this in numerous past videos, but I, I can't um, stress enough how much knowledge that there is within that YouTube channel and that Discord channel from just, just not Father Fish, but so many other hobbyists out there that are doing this alike. But I wanna share my journey with it. So what is a food web? So from my understanding, it's basically, you wanna collect a resurrection jar first. You're going to go down to a local river or lake or pond, whichever you have in your nearby area, grab a jar and grab a handful of gunk from the bottom of that body of water, like leaves, mulchy type material. You stick it in that jar and you fill it up with the water from that body of water. You bring it home and then you're going to wait 30 days observing that jar. Now, I mentioned this in his last two videos, but you want to watch and see what comes to life in there. Now, there are some organisms that you do not want in your tanks typically, um, like dragonfly nymph. Um, there's a few other ones, planaria worms, I don't care for. Some people say they're okay, but you can remove them from the jars when you see them then. And then when that's 30 days has gone up and you have noticed that there are nothing in that jar that you feel unsafe about putting in your tank with, you pour them into your tank. Now, that's what I'm going to be doing today. And then from there, that leaf litter and everything from that jars at the bottom of your tank, all those little microorganisms will feed off of that. They'll also help break down waste and everything within your tank to help feed the plants so the plants can feed off of that. And then secondly, your fish can feed off of the little organisms that are living and reproducing from that at the bottom of your tank. So it's one circle of food web. The fish eat off of the microorganisms, the microorganisms eat off of that leaf litter at the bottom and then you have to continuously put some leaves in there gradually over time to continue to feed those organisms at the bottom of your tank so like i said that is my understanding of what a food web is and i've been doing a lot of research and doing a lot of reading especially on that father fish discord so like i said if this is something you're interested in i highly recommend going checking it out but first let me show you my resurrection jars and then we'll go from there so these are my two jars that are currently under the light. This one is crystal clear. And you can see there are some organisms still swimming around. I think that's a little cyclops. See little things swimming around. So those will be coming in my tank with those leaves. Now this one looks cloudy. And I noticed this before. I'm like, why is that so cloudy? I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it in here. But if you zoom in. That's not cloud. That's all little things swimming around. That is fascinating. I can hold this camera still. So, and there's a nice snail that my Fahaka puffer will wind up eating. Um, like I said, I have not seen any planaria worms in here in a while since I've been observing it. I pulled a few out. That's the only bad thing in here that I would have seen I don't want in my tank. So these then are ready to be poured into my fish tank. I believe I'm going to pour the contents of both of them. Um, there might be a little 
dirty dirt at the bottom, which I don't plan on putting in. I'll get at least the leaves in the water itself so that all those little organisms do get in there. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, so the first jar is going to go in here. So it will look a little mucky at first, but that is okay. That will clear up. Especially once I get that wave maker going. Then let's put the second jar in. Now, I'm hoping that's not going to be too much organic material. They were thriving pretty good in those resurrection jars for a while there, so I'm assuming it'll be okay, but time will tell. Yeah, the little guppies I have in here are already down there, scoping it all out. I may kind of brush that out a little bit so it's not just in one big pile. And when I get that wave maker back on again, it'll start to push stuff around as well. I just wanted to let it settle a little bit. Now, if there's anybody in here that is experienced with the food web, uh, why don't you let me know if that was too much organic material for a 75 gallon or if that's okay. Um, Thinking it's going to be okay, but we shall find out. I think I'm going to turn the uh, wave maker back on, and then we'll see how this kind of dissipates through the aquarium. So the leaves will blow around a little bit, like I said, with that wave maker on, and they will find their little areas throughout the tank. Now, if you're asking, Am I asking for trouble by pouring the stuff in your aquarium from a local river or lake? I mentioned this in my last resurrection jar video that the common belief is that there's actually more harmful organisms within the water of a local fish store getting fish than there would be just from a sample from a local waterway. Now, obviously, if you have a local waterway that's a little sketchy looking with dead fish and stuff, then I'd be a little more against it. Um, secondly, if you're not comfortable with pouring this food web in here and you still want to collect that resurrection jar, you can culture some of the organisms out of there that you find and try to grow them in another container like Daphnia or Scuds, stuff like that. If you find them, you can pull them out, put them in another container and feed them and grow them and use that just as food. Now it's not the actual food web with these leaves and that will break down to feed your plants, but um, it is another option. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to sit back and wait and observe this for a while. I'll take some footage over the next few days to kind of see what happens with this, how the fish react. Um, and then watch and observe it. And then I'll come back with some update videos for sure because I will have to add more leaf litter in at points. So I want to update with that and show what I need to do. But um, other than that, this is adding my resurrection jar into my 75 gallon puffer tank and it is the start of the food web for this tank, which I'm very excited to try because I would love for this to be one natural tank as natural as one can be within a glass box that we contain here. So, well, that was the start of the food web for me, adding those resurrection jars into my puffer tank. Um, I plan on doing it to the rest of my tanks down here because they are all are dirted. So I will be making trips back down to my local waterway, collecting more resurrection jars over the next month or so. Um, I will keep updates and I will show you more. Like I said, this is just the first step. The first step is getting that resurrection jar, watching it and adding it to your tank. Now you need to start adding leaf litter and then dry leaves eventually. 
So that'll all be future videos kind of documenting the process that I go within my tanks doing this food web. Now, like I said before, if you're interested in this type of process with your, your fish tanks, I highly recommend to check out Father Fish. I'm sure you know him bone already if you're watching this, but if you don't, check out his YouTube channel. And then, like I said before, I highly, highly recommend to check out that Discord channel. I can't tell you enough how much information is on there because it's from so many different hobbyists like you or me that are so much more indulged into this field with this food web, the dirty tanks, the deep substrates, the resurrection jars. There's so many different topics on there that people have um, knowledge on to be able to spread and help help you in these endeavors if that's something you're interested in. So I highly re recommend checking that out. But other than that, uh, like I said, this is my video. Stay tuned for updates and for future parts of it. And I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I find this whole process to be completely just awesome. Like I, I'm really excited about all this and I, I'm really excited to see how these tanks turn out now that I started this food web process. So um, if this interests you, please consider hitting that subscribe button, but make sure you hit that notification bell because like I said, you don't want to miss any of those upcoming videos of the next steps of adding more leaves to the food web process of the 75 and then collecting all that stuff and putting them all in the rest of these tanks. So always remember to think outside the box and take a step back into nature. I hope to see you again here at Patty's Aquatics.